A crucial aspect of the beaches in Puget Sound is the vegetation that grows on the shorelines and uplands. Plants, and native plants in particular, are a key piece of the marine ecosystem, an important piece of the connection between the land, the upland, and the shoreline. In this first of four videos in our series on vegetation, we'll talk about why vegetation is so important for shoreline habitat and shoreline property owners, and how it connects to shoreline processes such as erosion. Be sure to watch the next videos in this series for more specific information on managing invasive plants, as well as managing trees on your property while still allowing for views. My name's Ben Alexander. I'm a restoration ecologist and the owner of Sound Native Plants. Native plants are the glue that holds the shoreline together. They provide shade and they provide habitat for insects and for animals and for birds. The vegetation gives a direct benefit to people on shorelines that are eroding and it creates food for the beach and the beach is where all the insects live that feed the fish. So it's this chain where plants are there to feed both insects and the fish, and they also cool the water temperatures. The trees also grow up and fall down and create habitat for birds and for small mammals, and they create microclimates where more vegetation grows. So it's kind of a cycle where you have a complete ecosystem that relies on the native vegetation. If you are a homeowner living on a shoreline and you're worried about erosion and you're worried about slope stability, there's some things you can do to look for signs that you might have problems. One of the things that you need to pay attention to is just how much native vegetation, how much trees and shrubs you have on your shoreline. Look to see if your lawn goes right up to the edge of the shoreline. If it does, that's probably an indication that it's more vulnerable. Look both on the slope and along the base for signs that you have water coming out of the slope. So seeps and running water. A lot of times it's water in the slope is the main trigger for a lot of shoreline slides. One of the best things that a lot of homeowners can do is just to plant a buffer zone of shrubs and trees along the shoreline edge. As far back, as much area as you feel like you can devote to that, even a strip as narrow as five feet along the top edge of the shoreline can provide a lot of benefit for slope stability. Invasive plants are plants that spread aggressively. They are adapted to disturb conditions, so places like scraped soils that have been bulldozed or places where fires have come through, and they displace the native plant species. Invasive plants in our area along the shorelines, there are some sort of really bad offenders, so English ivy, Himalayan blackberry, reed canary grass, scotch broom, Japanese knotweed, the Native Plant Society here and the scientific community considers native plants to be ones that were here before European settlement. And because we had the Lewis and Clark expedition and they had botanists with them, we actually have really good records about what was here before. But then there's some sort of refinements to that that we use a lot. We don't consider native plants to be plants that are uh, horticultural varieties. For example, you might go into a nursery and you'll find a King Edward red flowering currant, and that wouldn't be a native plant to us because it's been manipulated so that it no longer has the genetic diversity that a native plant has. So we try and focus in on what belongs naturally in our particular region. One of the things that I've been thinking about more recently is trying to get people into the mindset of, well, if the person before you had been thinking in the long term, they wouldn't have cut that tree down in the first place. 
know, I met one homeowner who uh, inherited her house from her great aunts. She was fearful of losing these large, beautiful dug fir that were growing right along the edge. I was talking about planting for the generations and, and trying to put them in a location that's not going to be right in front of your window or something. Think about handing our properties down to our children, their children, and because um, in reality, we've only been living in this way on this shoreline for really 100 years. A lot of these small shacks were put in the 1930s at the earliest, but then tribal members had been living in this area obviously before that. People have come to the shorelines for millennia because it's where the water and the land meet and it's the place for fishing and wildlife and socializing and enjoying all of the aspects of our beautiful world. We all share uh, connectedness with the world around us and having that established relationship with the plants and with the water and with the land on the shoreline is an important piece of that for me personally and I think it's also important for us as a society. <laughs>